where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom And we're off for a thousand mile voyage from here in Suriname all the way to the US Virgin Islands. It's pretty far and as you can tell we're completely unprepared. We The boat's not ready. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is because it's slack water right now we're just gonna untie and start drifting down the river. While we're going down the river we're going to get the boat prepared and ready and the reason is simple. If we take today to get the boat ready we won't have the boat ready by tomorrow. But if we're going down the river, we'll get the boat ready by the time we make it to the ocean. It's about 30 miles. It's gonna take many hours because we're just gonna drift out with the tide. There's a really strong current that comes in or out. And right now you can see that it's just slack water. The bubbles aren't going anywhere. So that's our time to leave. We're just gonna untie and off we go. How you doing? Just cleaning off the cockpit cushions with this dewy, gross blanket. <laughs> All right, well, at this rate, I believe slack low water down at the river is close to sunset. So we literally have all day because we're going down the river with the tide. So as we progress, so does the tide. It is seven o'clock on December 14th and we are headed to the Caribbean. Suriname has been a really surprisingly wonderful stop. It's not a place that most sailors go. Uh, it's very popular with the Dutch community of sailors, but other than that, we were the first Americans that some of the people who worked at the marina there had ever seen. So it was, and when I say Americans, I mean North Americans. <laughs> Uh, United States Americans. So I would really recommend Suriname to any cruisers who are looking to cross the Atlantic from east to west. It is a fabulous stop on the way to the Caribbean. You get to experience a new culture that's unlike any other and you get to experience pure nature which is one of my favorite things to do. We got to journey through the rainforest a few times, once with a guide, which was fantastic. We stayed in a marina where we had sloths in the trees around us. We trekked through a secondary forest, which used to be a coffee plantation. We saw one of the first synagogues ever created on the continental America. We ate lots of delicious food. And we were here for an entire month, uh, almost on the dot. Uh, so we are just thrilled that we came here and now we're going to the Caribbean, which was the entire reason we started cruising in the first place. The goal was the Caribbean and it's been three and a half years and we haven't gotten there yet. So I think it's high time. Charlie, you like the quarter berth? Just climbed up in here all by yourself. <laughs> this is how you get to come outside with us. We're on outside, which we are. Hold tight. Go on wing. Let's get your wing through. There you go. Now you're out of the way. Wait, 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 Charlie. Wait a second. We gotta get your harness on. Charlie. One moment, Charlie. Other wing. Yeah, good boy, Charlie. Oh, good Charlie.
spacel set up with a self tacker. So it's just a block that makes a yoke and the, the sheet just passes through it. So all you're really doing is setting the tension on it. The reason it's so awesome is when we're short tacking up this river, there's wind shifts and just all sorts of stuff. And it doesn't matter. When the sail starts to go, all you have to do is turn the helm. If you're trying to go upwind, you're sheeted for as upwind as possible. So all you're doing is one tack of the other and up you go. So our big plan was to leave the marina at slack water and have the entire tide to make our way out. Now the problem is this isn't tidal current, it's river current. So it doesn't really follow the tide itself. So we left at slack water, not high tide. Now the problem is right now we are now at slack water again. So our run is done. But there's still enough wind that we're still moving forward even though the current's starting to come back in so we're uh oh i really want to get out because if we can just get out we're done we're out of here otherwise we have to anchor and wait until tomorrow to try again because i really don't want to do this inlet in the dark okay we were just forced to drop anchor because the current was just too much we were <laughs> we were not going anywhere we couldn't fight it uh, and we really don't want to use up our battery for our motor. So we got about halfway down the river. Uh, tomorrow we will pick up and try again <laughs> and hopefully get out of the inlet. So that was our day. Now there's nothing left to do but cook and uh, watch a movie. It's dawn. It's time to get the anchor up. We are now approaching the mouth of the river and we're going out to sea. Okay. So that's gonna be so good to be back out there. And our next port's gonna be US Waters. And oh, I'm so excited for that because it's been so long since we've been back in US Waters. So really looking forward to it. We've been in that river for about a month. So it's, uh, you kind of forget what seas are like. And as we exited the mouth of the river, we're now coming into the ocean, you know, there's swell again. And the boat starts moving. It's like, whoa, what's this? He doesn't play with the expensive toys we got him, but give him a spoon. All right, we are a mile away from the last sea buoy, from the sea buoy actually. And after that, we're open ocean, technically. So I got Wendy all set up. She's got the helm. We're passing the safe water buoy now, which means we're out, we're free. I cut the motor. We used 75% of our battery power to make it down that river. And now that's it. We have about 10 days to get to the Virgin Islands. So in that time, the solar panels just charge the motor right back up. How are you doing, babe? Edge, you okay? After a month of being on a very placid river, it's a little bit of an adjustment to get back on the ocean, ocean again. It's a, a very calm day. Like we came out, we po we chose the weather because it was nice and calm, but it's still just like rolly and we both got a little nauseous. Maddie puked. I took a long nap because I wasn't feeling well. Now I'm rested to feel great, so I'm going to do first watch. Maddie's going to sleep now. And, uh, yeah, and Charlie's doing great with the waves. He's, uh, he's been really calm about it, which is nice. Uh, but it's, it's good to be back out, and it's good to be heading towards U.S. waters again. It's been so long since we've been anywhere American. Well, our first night back out naturally wouldn't be simple and easy no not us 
So the forecast, which is why I don't care for forecasts, says that it's supposed to be between 10 to 15 knots, day and night, the whole time for, for every day, past and present in this area. And the gusts are 18 to 20. So pretty much nice light conditions. It'll be easy. Yeah. Uh, we're doing five to six knots right now under trisole and staysole. And it was blowing so hard, the boat was just like plowing through the waves. And all of this on a moonless, pitch black night. First night out in the ocean. Yeah, so now I'm gonna get a shower because I saw many a wave shoot up and then rain down. <sighs> Poor little Charlie. <laughs> this is his first night at sea. And I don't think he knows what to make of it. But uh, he's doing all right. I was a little worried he was gonna get seasick like me, but <laughs> he seems to be a pretty hardy fella. Well, it appears we are sailing into rain. Sounds about right. All right. Well, mm, coming off watch. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Oh, long night. A really long night. So it's been kind of a weird beginning to this passage uh, from Suriname to the Virgin Islands. Yesterday, we were both super out of it. We just kind of set the sails and reefed down because Herbie was exhausted and I was just feeling super off and like drugged because of this patch. Now the patch is finally working because it takes about a day and I still feel like weirdly groggy but at least I'm not seasick anymore but last night we had a uh, squall and it was it was really rough weather despite the forecast which of course we don't trust anyway now the water has finally turned blue again so we're out in open ocean and it feels good to be thus we have about 900 miles to go. We're going straight to the Virgin Islands and skipping the rest of the Caribbean for a few reasons. Uh, one of them, and per perhaps the biggest one, is COVID. Each island has a different quarantine time and different expectations, so each time we went island hopping we would have to do a separate quarantine. One of the things that I'm like super adamant about is never go to sea without the trisail fully rigged and ready to just hoist. And I honestly didn't think we were going to need the trisail at all. Like I was, I was in complete denial that we needed it because the forecast every day that I'd ever looked for all the days that were available in the forecast all said that the winds were going to be like 10 to 15 knots, gusts of 18 to 20. And I'm like, oh, that'll be fine. But I rigged it up anyway. And then last night, holy crap, it was so much wind. Yeah, it was oh. insane. Yeah, so it was just a matter of go up in pitch black haven't done it in over a month like totally out of practice and it was just pull one halyard and up it goes it was oh i just i love that system because it's so simple and that makes it so much safer Such a fragile thing, I know. And with the winter comes the ice, the snow. But I'm ah, yes, here you didn't know. We have a new captain, and he stays at the helm. <laughs> Sir Charles. No, my love. All right, now that we are relatively positive Don't that there are no other storms coming, cold, we're going to take down our storm sail setup and put Monty back up. Herbie has volunteered to do this while I watch over Charlie. Yes, Charlie. That's your Dyneema tether. So we learned from last time that it is extremely important that the trisail get taken all the way 100% down before Monty goes up. Because what happened last time was Herbie didn't take the trisail all the way down 
and our boom fell off. <laughs> so this time it's gonna be different. But I'm trying to shelter So there appears to be a vessel on fire off of our starboard. It could be an oil ship that just set itself on fire because that something. apparently happens. Well, yeah, so, so what I've read is it's illegal for them to dump oil, but if they have like a burst or something, instead of spilling oil, they light it and it controlled fire, sort of. I don't work on oil rig. I don't actually know all these things. It's just a thing that I've seen a little. So uh, it's still quite concerning and we did radio them specifically to ask if they needed assistance if anything was everything was okay and then we radioed everybody else around us and nobody answered <laughs> is our volume up yeah okay yeah so i'm assuming we don't have to worry about it but it's still a very strange thing to see at night in the middle of the ocean lovely fun day let's see so, so we're it's a very rough day at sea today. yeah horribly imbalanced so the wind vane just can't really it's not working properly thanks for watching this episode of sailing wisdom don't forget to like the video share it with your friends and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next rigging doctor episode and if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.